So hello everyone. Welcome to Fidget's second webinar, which is the Getting Started Kit with Java. So a little introduction for myself. My name is Ellen. I've been with Fidget's for about a year. Um, I hold a master's of education and my background is in uh, high school education and uh, design research. So Fidget's are programmable USB sensors that are used by industries uh, across the world. Um, the Fidget's that students use are actually the exact same fidgets that that an engineer at NASA or Tesla or any large company would use. They're the same. So we just launched the new fidgets education website um, and we're really excited to share that with you. So today we will be uh, reviewing the Get It Started course, which is, uses the Getting Started kit with Java. So fidgets are really great for students. You can use them with a Mac or a PC. The fidgets education programming is targeted towards grade nine to 12 students. And students will need a basic knowledge of loops, conditionals, as well as some knowledge of arrays and methods to be able to complete this program. So first I'll start with a bit of an overview of the fidgets website. So to check out the fidgets website, you will navigate to fidgets.com slash education. So this will take you to the main fidgets page. Here you'll see a number of tabs. So the tab that you'll want to use as a teacher for resources will be the educators tab. So here we're going to be developing resources for you for how to implement um, these fidgets into your classroom as well as tips, tricks, um, some grading guidelines. Those will be coming soon. Um, but this is a really good area for you to learn about fidgets in your classroom. The other great resource is news. So news is where all of our webinars will be posted, as well as all of the webinar videos. So if you're looking to look at, find this video after we're completed, news is really where you're going to want to go. And if you want to learn more, um, we have a lot of upcoming webinars uh, exploring different aspects of fidgets, uh, different languages, different devices. Um, and we're really excited about continuing these webinars. The next tab you might be interested in is buy. So buy is where you'll be finding all of your uh, education fidgets, including the getting started kit and your rover kit. As well listed there are any other fidgets that we have courses for right now, things like your light fidget or your sonar fidget will all be listed under this tab. If you're looking for a fidget that uh, doesn't fall under this tab, don't worry, fidgets uh, cover a lot more products than what's currently in the buy tab. So if you're interested, um, fidgets.com you navigate to sensors, all sensors, um, you will receive 40% off any of the fidgets. So there's many different types, thumbstick fidget, dial fidget, spatial. But really what your students will be interested in, what we'll be covering today is under this learn tab, learn here. So this is really where your students will live in this website. Um, this is where all of our programming is and all of the tutorials. So if we click on learn, you'll see a few different options. So the first option that you'll notice is what are fidgets. So this is a great overview of what fidgets are, um, some background on fidgets. It's a really great um, homework assignment for students or a brief overview just to give students some context for the tools. So we really want students to understand that yes, these are real world tools. They are used by professionals. Um, they can use this knowledge later in their careers and, and later in their research. The other lessons are groups of lessons. So the device tutorials um, cover the various fidgets devices. So most fidgets look something like these. So the light fidget or the sonar fidget. So there's tutorials that live um, in each in the, this tab for each fidget um, that consist of a code sample, um, some practice questions, as well as a, an application se section so students can learn about where these devices are applied, 
um, and things like that. If you're interested in learning more about these devices, next week we actually have a tutorial that will be reviewing uh, various Fidgets devices. So make sure you sign up and tune into that one. Um, we're really excited about, about that to review uh, our, all of our tools. Another link is projects. So projects are include things like your Rover kit. So this is a prepackaged kit that you can get for your students. And there's a course going through how to use um, this Rover as well as extensions to add on various other devices. Um, as well, there's extension projects for your getting started kit. So if students complete the getting started course and want to keep going, you can find more projects for your getting started kit. So the getting started kit doesn't end at the end of the getting started kit course. There's also other projects that use individual sensors. Um, so there's a project about uh, cell phone screen timing that uses the light fidget or a security system project using your sonar fidget. So there's a handful of other projects and we're always adding more. But the main focus of today is going to be your getting started kit. So your getting started kit, for those of you who don't have one yet, will look something like this when it's put together. It consists of two buttons, two LEDs, and a humidity fidget. Humidity fidget looks something like that. So let's get started here. So your Getting Started Kit tutorial starts with a brief video, which again overviews some applications of fidgets and, um, and gives a general overview of what fidgets are. The next section will be a setup section. So this is where you set up your IDE, um, you set your language, you build the kit. Um, then there's a section Simple Fidgets, which reviews your LEDs and buttons. Smart fidgets will review your humidity sensor, and then a final challenge to put all of those pieces together. So the course really builds uh, one lesson on each on the next um, towards a final understanding of all of fidgets. But students will start with the set my language and environment. So as you notice here, there are a number of languages and a number of development environments that students can choose from. So today we're going to be reviewing Java with NetBeans. However, you can also use Java with Eclipse, Python with Thonny, PyScript or PyCharm, C Sharp with Visual Studios, or Swift with Xcode. So like I said, today we're going to use Java with NetBeans um, to provide an overview of the Getting Started course. So all students have to do is select their language and environment, and then done. And now the entire website will be set up to be um, displayed with Java and NetBeans. So students only have to set this once and it will be remembered on their computer which is really great um, as you go along, students don't have to select or sort through a lot of different languages, but the language options are still there. If students encounter trouble ever with their code, the first thing to check is this upper corner Java symbol. So if that is not Java, then you'll want to get students to reset their language. So after that, students will go into the build kit section of the course. So I'm not going to review um, each step of the build kit. Um, the kits do come disassembled. So there's a few different steps, but they're step by step with images for a brief, simple um, assembly process. So this is great because it reviews all the, the different components so students know what each component looks like. So first they assemble buttons, then you add your LEDs, 
then you connect uh, to the Vint Hub. So I'll just stop here and just explain the Vint Hub a little bit. So your Vint Hub is actually an essential feature of Fidgets. So all of your, almost all of your Fidgets projects will be using the Vint Hub. So it's really important um, that students uh, take a look at this and notice uh, the various features of the Vint Hub, which will be reviewed later. But this is a very essential feature for any project going forward. And then lastly, as the assembly, we add our humidity sensor to the back of our getting started kit. So after that, students will have a kit that looks something like this. Then they'll move on to configure. So you'll notice first that there's another set my language and environment button. So in case students uh, don't have or, or missed the set my language step or um, somehow find them, found themselves off the main path, um, every lesson starts with the set my language and environment um, button. So just in case uh, something goes awry, it's a great place to to check to make sure students have the correct language and environment set. So today I'm gonna to walk through how to set up uh, NetBeans with uh, fidgets. Um, so if you're interested in NetBeans, you can download NetBeans for free here. So NetBeans is uh, a Java uh, development platform that works with Windows, Linux, or Mac. Um, so it's great for, for almost all computers. Um, you will have to also install Java with, uh, with NetBeans, um, but it's a really great, great simple free environment to use. So the instructions that I'll be reviewing today work for a um, PC. If you are working on a Mac, um, just email us and we'll send you the instructions to install on Mac because they are slightly different. But today we'll just be reviewing the PC instructions. So the first thing you'll do uh, when working with NetBeans is download um, a zip file. So this contains all your fidgets libraries. Fidgets does not install anything on um, the computer, so it's really great for students. Um, you don't have to worry about any installation processes. So then we open the zip file in our downloads, and we will select extract all. And extract. So now we've extracted the files. Then we will turn to NetBeans. So this is the main uh, page of NetBeans. You will want to go to File, New Project, and select Java with Ant and Java Application, and select Next. Here, you'll name your new project Getting Started. And Finish. So this will create a new project. After we create the new project, we'll have to add some files so that uh, your project has access to fidgets. So we open up our project here at the side. And you'll want to right click on library. Then you'll want to go to add jar. You will then navigate to your downloads 
you'll find that extracted file that we uh, downloaded. Open up that and you'll want to find fidget22.jar and add that to your library. Now we aren't quite done yet. There is one more uh, thing we have to add before we can get going with our fidgets. So next we have to right click on getting started and select properties. Then you'll see this window come up. Now on the sideboard, sidebar, you'll want to select run. Here, you'll have to copy this line from step 10. Into this VM options uh, window. We then have to go back to our download file and find the x64 file and open that. Then we copy the file path and paste it between the two uh, quotation marks in the window here and select OK. Now we're ready to go. So that's a bit of a complicated process and I don't expect anyone followed along the first time, but the step-by-step -step process is in the instructions with images um, as well. You will have uh, this uh, video to slowly work through step-by-step. -step. If you're looking for a little bit of a simpler install, we do recommend um, checking out Python as well. If you haven't selected a, a coding language for your uh, classroom yet, Python is a little bit, a uh, little bit cleaner than, than the Java install right now, but Java still works great. So with building the kit and configuring, students are now ready to get into their code. So it's a really brief setup and then students go right into their code. We really, Really, the goal of when we were creating this course was to get students involved in the code as quickly as possible and um, have students see, see results and, and um, be creating and using those problem solving skills as, as quickly as possible um, with minimal overhead. So let's check out the first lesson, Blink LED. So Blink LED is a first lesson in the section called Simple Fidgets. So simple fidgets covers your two buttons and your two LEDs. So there's three lessons and then a practice problem. Each lesson builds another component on. So the first lesson, the first thing you'll notice is a GIF. So the GIF shows students what to expect when they're going to run their code. Next, we will have a code sample. So this code sample will run and give the results of GIF. Next, we have a practice section to engage students in that code, as well as a troubleshooting section to, um, to give students a bit of independence in common errors that may happen, um, such as uh, the installation or the fidgets not being quite connected properly um, and things like that. We really wanted students to be as independent as possible during this course. So let's start by checking out the code. So students will copy the code and paste it into their IDE. Now you'll notice for NetBeans, we want to keep that package getting started line up at the top. We do not want to erase that line. And we paste our code in. You'll see it pastes with, with the comments so students will have those comments for future reference. Now I'm going to get everyone to look up at my screen here as I run this code sample. 
And I'll want you to look at this LED that I'm pointing to right now. When I run the code, you'll see the LED blinks on and off. And I'll do that again because it is a little quick. So that's your first fidgets program is blinking that LED on and off. Now, if you notice the code that I pasted in has a lot more detail in the, the comments. So this is available when you roll over each comment and each comment explains what that line does within fidgets. So all fidgets projects um, follow the same format. So the first thing you have to do when you create a fidget um, code is import that library. So we added the library in the configure step. Now we have to import it into our code. So we do have access to all of those, those great fidgets library features. In Java, we'll have to add a throws exception because exceptions just do come up from time to time. We don't want those to interrupt our code. So we add throws exception. Next, we create an object to represent our physical fidget in our code. So a red or the LEDs use a digital output object. So this uh, object is used to provide a voltage to things like LEDs. Um, and it will be how you interact with your fidget in your code. So we create an object to represent um, our fidget in our software. Next, we will have to address our fidget. So addressing a fidget tells your program where to find that fidget. So that's where your Vint Hub really comes into play. So the first thing you have to do when you address a fidget is set the hub port. So you'll notice if you look at your Vint Hub inside of your Getting Started Kit, each port is numbered. So when you set the hub port, you're telling your, your program which port to find that device. So your red LED will be plugged into hub port one. Next, with simple fidgets, we set the hub port device to true. That's indicating that it is a simple fidget um, and that your program will have to talk to your fidget first. So we've created an object um, to represent our physical fidget. And now we've told our program where to find the fidget. And now we have to start the communication process between the physical fidget and that software object. We do this with open. So next we always call our fidget open. And you'll notice that there is a number here. So that number represents a bit of a wait time. So it can take us second for fidgets, the physical fidget to connect to the software object. So we add in a wait time just to make sure we're not using the fidget before it's actually connected. After that, we're ready to use our fidgets in our program. So here to turn the LED on, we set the state to true. Turning that LED on, we use a sleep for uh, a thousand milliseconds to uh, keep that LED on for one second of time. And then we turn off that LED before ending our program by setting the state to false. Now you may be thinking my students may not read those comments. So that's why we really have the practice sections. So the practice sections get students uh, engaged in the code and actively learning the code right away. So we want students to, again, be in that code and problem solving as soon as possible. So things like modify your code so the LED stays on for two seconds. Students have to go dive into their code to see what actually keeps their LED on for that two seconds. So it's the thread sleep timer. Um, other things uh, include investigating the address section. So modify your code to flash the green LED um, instead of the red LED. Students have to dive into the code and realize it is not the variable name that tells uh, your program which 
uh, fidget to use. It's actually that address and setting that hub core. So again, we're diving in, we're seeing what that code is doing. And again, there is troubleshooting, so students can have that independence. So if you are, um, if you are working, uh, working remotely and sending these kits home with your students, um, they don't have to be waiting on you to answer an email or a call um, about something that's gone wrong. They can really do that initial troubleshooting on their own, which is really nice, um, especially during this time, to give students um, that independence and even in the classroom to give students um, that feeling of independence and that they can solve their own, their own, um, their own initial issues if there are any. So with that, the first lesson is done. And we move on to lesson two. So lesson two um, is reading the button. So we've learned how to use our LED. Now we're going to learn how to use our button. Again, we have a GIF um, showing what students can expect from their code. We have the code sample. We have a practice section. And then again, we have that troubleshooting section. So let's see what this code does. So we copy the code. We paste that code in, making sure we keep that package line because we are using NetBeans. And we run our code. So here in the console, you'll see button state false. Now, if I press that button, you'll see it change to true. If I release it, it'll go back to false. Press, it'll change to true. So this process will continue forever. So make sure your students stop running their program when they're done. If students forget to um, stop their program, it can cause errors when you try to start running your next program. Fidgets can only be used by one program at a time. So that's a good troubleshooting check um, if students are getting um, something funny happening, um, make sure you, they've stopped uh, their code before continuing. So we'll take a bit of a deeper dive into this code again. Again, we add that fidgets library, giving um, our program access to all those good fidgets features. Uh, we handle exceptions um, with that throws exception um, addition. We create an object to represent our um, our uh, physical fidget. Um, in this case, it is a digital input. Uh, so again, that takes and reads in your button state, um, or represents your button, I should say. We address our uh, fidget. So again, we open up our kit and check which hub port our red button is plugged into. In this case, it is hub port zero. We set our hub port device to true because it is a simple fidget. And then we open our object. So we've created a software object to represent our physical fidget. We've told that software object where to find our fidget. And now we're starting that communication process again, giving it a little bit of time to make that physical connection to your fidget. After that, we use our fidgets. So here you'll notice the first thing is an infinite while loop. So we're using a polling method um, to read our button. So the loop will continuously, um, continuously iterate um, and, uh, and print out the state of the button. We do have a sleep time in this loop just to manage how many times that button is being checked. And we check, we get the button state using the uh, get state method. Once again, we go into practice to investigate that code further. So the first thing is modifying our loop to repeat at different time intervals. So this really lets, uh, lets your students 
um, to see how that loop works um, and understand the effects of that sleep time on the responsiveness of their button and their program. Again, we look at addressing um, and understanding that set hub port um, and that connection between um, your fidget and your computer and how, um, how we represent those objects. Um, so again, that uh, green button, students will be looking to that address. And then we have a bit more of a challenging question. So modify your code to only print the button when the state changes. This is used in later um, sections as well. So it's really important students um, focus on this question and, and uh, really challenge themselves to complete this question. Then we have again our troubleshooting section um, with some uh, general common issues that may arise. So again, students can have that independence um, to problem solve on their own. So next is lesson three. So in this lesson, students learn how to use their buttons and LEDs together. So now we've learned one component, we've learned the other component. Now we're putting all of those components together. So here we use all four of our simple fidgets. Once again, we have our code sample with our comments explaining each section, our practice, and our troubleshooting. So I won't run this code sample just because of time, but I will review it. So again, we add our fidgets library, we throw exception, then we can create objects for each of our devices. So there'll be four objects that we are creating, two digital output and two digital input to represent the buttons and the LEDs. Next, we have to address each of our fidgets individually, telling our program where to find those devices. After that, we open all of our devices, creating that communication path between our um, software object and our physical fidget, again, with those wait times. Then we use our fidget. So here we're checking the state of our button and then turning on the appropriate LED. So green button turns on green LED, red button turns on red LED. And again, we have that sleep time to keep our um, program checking at a reasonable rate. When we go into our practice section, really what we're um, getting students to practice in this is seeing um, the customizable nature of fidgets, um, that the button isn't automatically connected to the LED, that we are forming those connections. So for example, um, you modify your program so the LED turns off when the button is pressed versus on, modify it so um, the red button controls the green LED, the green button controls the red LED, and then counting the total number of button presses. So that's the more challenging question, um, which builds off of that uh, practice three from the previous lesson. So again, we're building on those problem solving skills, we're building on those applications while still learning the basics of fidgets. So we're practicing our coding skills while we're learning about these new devices. Again, we have that troubleshooting section to review uh, again, those, those common issues, did your device become unplugged? Sometimes when you're opening and closing the kit, it can cause your vent hub to come unplugged or if you bump your computer, things like that. So that lesson one to three are done and we're moving on to our first problem solving or larger problem solving activity. which is the tug of war. So really students have completed all components to do this practice challenge um, and they're just putting them all together. So for example, um, the tug of war, each player is assigned the red or green button and the first player 
to click their button 10 times wins a tug of war. Students have actually counted their button presses in the previous lesson. So students have those components. Now they're just putting those together to practice again their coding skills, their problem solving skills and get students really involved in that code and active um, in that, uh, that code. So students complete the tug of war challenge. Um, for you, we do have solutions to everything on the website. Um, if you email us, we are happy to send those solutions um, your way. We don't post the solutions on the website just because uh, students have, a, have a, a great ability to find those sorts of things. So we keep those a little bit more private, but we're happy to share those. Um, again, everything on the website has a solution built in or built already that we can just send along our way. And with that, we finish. So now we've completed simple fidgets. So again, the simple fidgets are those buttons and LEDs on uh, the Getting Started kit. Now we move towards our smart fidget. So this is the second half of the course where you learn a more uh, typical fidget. Um, things like the sonar fidget are also a smart fidget. The light fidget, also a smart fidget. But today we're going to learn about the humidity fidget. So it'll look something like this plugged into the back of your getting started kit. So the first lesson, lesson four is read temperature. So again, you'll notice that GIF showing a sample output. Next, you'll notice that code sample again. Something you may notice off the, right away about uh, this code sample is it's shorter than and simpler than uh, the simple fidgets. So what's different about a smart fidget compared to a simple fidget is the addressing section. So a smart fidget, if in most cases, you actually don't need to address. So it will communicate directly through the Vent Hub to your program, telling your program where it is. So you don't actually have to include that um, setting hub port and setting that hub port device, creating a bit of a simpler program. So let's check this program out. So we copy the code, we paste it in again, remembering to keep that package line in there. And we run our code. So again, you'll notice the temperature printed out. It's very warm in the room I'm in right now. You can manipulate the temperature by holding the fidget. Uh, you can see the temperature going up there if I'm holding it. You can also blow on your fidget to uh, change the temperature and see the, the temperature working or the temperature fidget working and changing. Um, right now, I would recommend the holding because of everything that's going on versus blowing on the fidget. And then we can stop our program. So again, remembering to stop our program. And uh, for the, uh, to run the next program. So again, we have, uh, that adding that library, throwing that exception, creating that object we don't need to address because it is a smart object or, or a smart fidget. Um, then we open, forming that connection between that software object we've created and the tempter sensor. And then we use our fidgets again using that polling technique with the sleep time. Now our practice question here is to convert the temperature data from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So the humidity fidget will output um, very accurate temperature in Celsius. We understand that uh, Fahrenheit is also a really, really common, uh, common unit of measurement. So for that practice, we're giving students um, 
that uh, practice converting it into Fahrenheit to give maybe a more accessible unit or a more practical unit depending on their application. Again, we have that troubleshooting section, reviewing those basic um, errors that may occur. So again, a really simple program to get very high quality results. And that's lesson four. Now we move on to the final lesson. So the final lesson is again, exploring that humidity fidget. So it's called the humidity fidget, but we read temperature in the last lesson. So in fact, fidgets can have more than one sensor in them. So the humidity fidget has both a humidity sensor and a temperature sensor in it. So we can use both of those at the same time. So in this program, we add that fidgets library. We throw that exception. We create our two objects for our one device. So one device can produce more than one object. We open those two objects. And then again, we use that polling method to gather our results. So I'll show you this one. Run that code. Again, you can see that humidity data and that temperature data getting printed out. Again, you can hold on to your fidget to see the numbers changing. So it's a great way to check to make sure your program is working correctly and to see how that data um, is manipulated and changed. Again, you can blow it on it also. Maybe not right now. And then we remember to stop our program when we are done with that because we are using that infinite loop, but will continue to run and could cause um, issues later on. So remembering to stop our program. Again, we have some practice questions and we're getting more into practicing those coding skills. So in these two practice questions, uh, we're both learning how to uh, get data from our sensor, as well as practicing our if statements. So learning that get humidity is how you get humidity from your sensor um, and only printing the humidity if it's above a certain amount and if it's below printing something else. So really, um, really seeing um, that, uh, those results and how, how we work with the data we're getting. Again, troubleshooting. And with that, all of our lessons are completed. So it's a really uh, uh, minimal uh, course to get students really involved in that code. Again, we want to get students in the code, in the problem solving and using more creative skills um, quickly um, to grab their interests and to, to really see the, the potential um, and, and get those, those creative juices flowing within their code and seeing, um, seeing their code outside of their, um, their screen. So we have a, for the practice for the smart fidgets, we have a hot or cold um, program. So here you can bind the temperature sensor in your humidity fidget with your LEDs from the previous lesson. So we're putting together two separate groups of knowledge. Again, we have um, most of that code done already from our previous lessons. In our previous lessons, we use if statements to determine if a temperature was above or below a certain level and printed out uh, our output uh, dependent on where the temperature was. Here we're doing the same thing. So if we're between 20 and 24 degrees, we're turning on that green LED. So we're just adding that LED component again building on those skills and practicing those skills, seeing them in actual applications. And then we finish. And with that, all of our lessons are complete. And we move on to our final challenge. So our final challenge um, is a uh, build thermostat.
So the build thermostat puts together every component of your getting started kit. So your humidity fidget, your two buttons, and your two LEDs. Again, we are building on um, those practice questions we've completed earlier. So for example, every time the user presses the green button, they increase the set temperature by one. Now, if you remember way back in lesson three, we counted button presses. So we're using those same uh, code blocks that we've created previously and now inserting them into that practical application. Um, having those problem solving skills, those coding skills really applied and, and practiced again and again to get students really um, really cemented in, in what these concepts are and, and seeing them in action. So it's not just an abstract thing they're doing, it's a real practical application. So again, there's the different steps that pe students have to take to complete their thermostat. And with that, we have some troubleshooting again. And with that, they're finished, they're getting started kit. So once you're finished their getting started kit, you're ready to move on to um, any individual device tutorials or any project. So students can really quickly get into more creative, uh, creative outlets. Um, the getting started kit can be uh, used again to, uh, to do other projects. So we do have a section in project just about more getting started projects. So you have the humidity sensor and the getting started kits, so you can continue to, to work on, uh, work off, off of this kit. So if you only have this kit, it's not the end of the road. You can continue to learn from and use this kit in various um, applications. We have students who use, do video games and different things using GUIs. Um, really students can get, get creative um, or again use um, visiting that project section to get more getting started. Um, okay, courses. So again, this course generally takes students kind of uh, one to two weeks of dedicated class time to complete before they can move on to other um, programs. Again, uh, you'll be the judge of your students and how you would like to implement it. We've had Different teachers do different things with the kits. Um, again, they're targeted towards grade nine to 12 students who already have uh, coding knowledge with the loops and conditionals, um, as well as some arrays and methods as we get into the projects um, and devices. Um, really, they're, they're a great, great alternative to um, toys that are commonly seen in the classroom because they are, um, they are real world devices, so students um, if they have a sonar sensor, they, they can use them, uh, use those skills later in their careers and really, um, really getting that, that real world experience. Um, these kits are really great because they are super durable. Um, so if you are sending them home with students, you don't have to worry about um, an individual fidget breaking very easily. They are very, very durable, um, durable products that can be used again and again. Um, and you can mix and match different fidgets to create different projects. So it's really, um, really you're building a toolkit that can be used for a variety of applications. Um, we've had students send them home uh, during this uh, pandemic time. We've had um, teachers use them in their classroom during busier times um, to prevent uh, a lot of homework going home. So it's great um, around like midterm time if students are really overwhelmed. Um, it's a great activity to give them kind of some independence and some calm time to just complete these activities at their own pace. Um, it's also great if you're going to be away. Sometimes it's hard to find that substitute that has coding knowledge to continue your class at the same pace it was going. So this is a great activity for those situations as well. So again, if you want to explore more of fidgets, um, check out Again, the device tutorials or the projects. Um, you can also check out that buy tab to continue to learn about um, or continue to grow your fidgets inventory and explore 
uh, different products as well check out that news tab so this is where all of our webinars uh, will be announced so again next wednesday we have advanced sensors with python where we'll be reviewing some of our other sensors that we have and and how those device tutorials work um, and then later on we will have a again a rover kit uh, tutorial which will show off the features of our rover kit as well So with that, I covered the basics of fidgets with Java. So uh, first I wanna say thank you everyone for listening to me for the last hour. Um, and now if there are any questions, um, please feel free to ask now or um, contact us later.